Hi, I'm Herb Gross, and welcome once again to our Math as a Second Language workshop, where today we'll be discussing sign numbers. Now, when I was introduced to sign numbers, I actually felt I wasn't learning anything. Uh, to me, they were just a very, very complicated way of saying something simple. And one of the reasons was, even though it was inadvertent, it was the only place I can remember in my early math education days where teachers were using the adjective noun theme without even noticing it. For example, one day we came into class and we were introduced to sign numbers. And all I remember is the teacher saying, now positive three is going to mean a $3 profit, and negative three is going to mean a $3 loss. And I'm saying, well, if negative three means a $3 loss, why aren't we saying just a $3 loss? But in any event, that's the way it was. And uh, it went something like this. As far as I was concerned, negative numbers would never have been invented if it wasn't for the concept of profit and loss. Just like when we studied fractions, I always felt that fractions wouldn't have been invented if people didn't want to slice pies up into equally sized pieces. So it went something like this. Negative three meant a $3 loss. Positive eight meant an $8 profit. So something as complicated as positive eight minus negative three, uh, to me, just meant how do I convert a $3 loss into an $8 profit? In other words, this still meant to me, what do I have to add to a $3 loss, negative three, to create an $8 profit, positive eight? So in my mind, it wasn't very difficult at all. To get from a $3 loss to breaking even, which we just called zero, uh, I had to make $3. And then to get to an $8 profit, I needed eight more dollars. So altogether, I had to add on positive three and positive eight. In other words, positive eight minus negative three was the number I got by first adding on positive three to negative three to get to zero, then adding on positive eight. So positive three plus positive eight, which was the same as positive eight plus positive three, was just an $11 profit. Now, the question that comes up is, this is not a very difficult concept. The ancient Greeks were studying rational and irrational numbers, which were much more complicated. Yet the ancient Greeks did not study negative numbers. In fact, the numbers that we refer to as negative numbers, the ancient Greeks referred to as imaginary numbers. You see, I like to call this realness is in the eyes of the beholder. Remember, if you're visualizing numbers as being lengths, can a length be so short that even if it was three inches longer, it would still be invisible. Didn't make sense. So the, the question that really comes up is, who really needs negative numbers? I, I can talk about profit and loss. I can talk about anything I want. But why do I need negative numbers? In other words, in terms of a seamless transition, as we went from one topic to another, somehow or other, negative numbers seemed like to be an individual shot out of the blue. In terms of our adjective noun theme, there's a very natural way to introduce sign numbers. And let's do it in the way of a rather simple question. The population of a certain town is 50,000 people. What will the population be if it now changes by 5,000 people? Pretty simple sounding question, but what's the missing piece of information? Well, it depends on whether the 5,000 person change was an increase or a decrease. You see, we've already introduced rational numbers and motivated them physically by talking about rate of change. Now, when you're talking about a rate of change or a ratio, the missing part of the adjective is, is it going to be, uh, how should we word it, the missing part of the noun, whichever way you want to look at it, is how do we know whether the change is positive or negative? And that's where the sign numbers would come in if we were developing the course the way we've been talking about up until now in the form of a seamless transition. So in other words, what would happen now is, given that we're talking about a rate of change, a rate of change could be increasing, and we'll elect to call that positive. Remember, the key point is we're not allowed to use words when we're dealing with math. Remember, all of the math that you learn, the way it's written in math books, the numbers are adjectives. We, we don't put in any nouns. So 
the word positive eventually can't be used, and that's why we, we have to be careful about how are we going to say this mathematically. Decreasing just meant negative, and no change at all meant zero. So for example, when I saw something like positive five plus negative five equals zero, to me all that meant was if something increases by five and then is followed by a decrease in five, the net result is that there's no change. Now, here's where the mathematical part comes in. When we're dealing with math, we don't see the words positive or negative. All we see are the adjectives themselves. So why would we even want to invent psi numbers? Well, let's review briefly. Suppose all you knew were whole numbers. Remember we did this? And we wanted to look at 2 divided by 3. The definition of division meant, what do you have to multiply 3 by to get 2 as the answer? Now, it was easy to see that if you multiply 3 times 0, you get 0. And if you multiply 3 by 1, you get 3. So in other words, like Goldilocks and the three bears, we tried 0 and that was too small. We tried 1 and that was too big. But there were no whole numbers between 0 and 1. And that's why we invented fractions. Now the same thing happens with 2 minus 3. What does that mean? It means what number do you have to add to 3 to get 2? Well, up until now, we're only the smallest number we have is 0. The number system starts with 0. At this point, if we drew the number line, it would just start at 0 and move to the right. Well, 3 plus 0 is already 3. That's already too big. So there, there can't be any number that we've already invented that allows us to fill this in successfully. So just in the same way that we had to invent 2 thirds to answer the question 2 divided by 3, we now have to invent a number which we'll call negative 1 to represent the answer to this problem. Now, the main question that comes up is, is it worth bothering? In other words, if, if the smallest number you can have is 0, why bother talking about something less than 0? And the answer is that sometimes zero is just a point of reference. For example, if it's two degrees Fahrenheit and it cools off by three degrees, you, the temperature is what? One below zero. In other words, zero isn't an absolute zero in that case. It just indicates a starting point, a measuring point. So the question really becomes, as we go along, how are we going to visualize sign numbers? Uh, in terms of pure mathematics, we can't use the words increasing, we can't use the words decreasing, uh, we can't use profit, we can't use loss, we have to do this mathematically, but we can use increasing and decreasing, profit and loss, to help motivate us to see what we want to do next. So here's what the key thing becomes, and this thing sounds very, very formal. In math, what we say is, given any, any sign number A, there exists another sign, number b, such that a plus b is 0. Now that sounds very, very abstract. And all it means is if you have a number that's, say, like 3, there's another number now which we're going to call negative 3. $3 profit followed by a $3 loss brings you back to 0. If you start with negative 3, how do you bring that back to 0? There's a number called positive 3. Negative 3 plus positive 3 equals 0. That's just going to be a rule of the game. B is referred to as the opposite. That's the colloquial term. The mathematical term is the additive inverse of A and is usually denoted by negative A. I use a raised minus sign, which I'll explain later. So here's the key point. With sign numbers, there are only two nouns, positive and negative. For example, when you write negative 3, the adjective is 3 and the noun is negative. 3 is often referred to as the magnitude or the absolute value of negative 3, and we often write this as the absolute value. See, we enclose it by, in vertical bars as equals 3. Positive and negative are really relative terms. It just means what? The beauty of this is, if it's not one noun, it has to be the other. See, let me just make sure that we're clear on that. See, if I say that the temperature changed by 3 degrees, 
that would be this much. The adjective three would be modifying the temperature change. To indicate whether the temperature change was positive or negative, I would have to put, if it was, if it changed by, if it decreased by three degrees, I would write it this way. And so this whole thing now is a compound adjective, an adjective phrase describing the change in temperature. Okay? You feel that okay? So, again, I've had English teachers complain. See, I say that three, in this compound adjective phrase, three is being modified. Three is really the unit, it's how many. And the sign is simply telling you whether it's increasing or decreasing. In other words, it's very strange for people to see the adjective coming after the noun. Teachers have often told me that kids cannot get this idea. Well, if that does bother you, we could have written it this way, or we could have read, read three neg, or whatever you wanted to call it this way. But notice that when you say $4, four dollars, four is the adjective, dollars is the unit. We don't usually write this. So it's just a matter of confusing what you're used to uh, with what's natural. So in other words, in the sign number, the number that we see is the adjective. The sign is the noun. And keep in mind that they are relative terms. In other words, one is just the opposite of the other. Let me see if I can give you an example. You buy a candy bar for $2. So the amount of candy you have is increased by one, see, positive one. However, looking at it from the merchant's point of view, the number of candy bars the shopkeeper has has decreased by one. By the same token, the amount of money you have has decreased by $2, but the amount of money that the shopkeeper has has increased by $2. So in other words, these are relative terms. One is, colloquially, one is the opposite of the other. And in terms of the number line, we can indicate it something like this. Up until now, up until today's lesson, as far as we were concerned, the number line started at a particular point and went off to the right, and we named the numbers one, two, three, et cetera. And now all that's happened is we've decided that we need to have something that allows us to add something on to positive one to get back to zero. Some, and that's what in led to inventing the number line to continue, mo but moving from now right to left in the, what we call now the negative direction. Okay, so in terms of the number line, all that's happened now, and remember, before we had sign numbers, we didn't worry, we just called these numbers one, two, three, and now, in terms of this new vocabulary where the two nouns are positive and negative, in terms of the number line, we can say positive means to the right of zero, negative means to the left of zero. So now what happens is the number line, unlike before, now extends on both sides of zero. We now have that part of the number line. And I think you may all have known this before, but what I want you to see is the physical model is just a nice demonstration of the concept, but the concept has to be defined mathematically independently of any model. So what that means is something like this. In a math course, in a book, I see positive eight minus negative three. The book can't explain, this means a $3, what do you do to a $3 loss to turn it into an $8 profit? The wording has to be without any reference to the units. So all this is going to mean is the number we must add to negative 3 to obtain positive 8 as a sum. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're now going to be looking at what we did today. We're now going to be looking at that, maybe making reference to physical models but by and large, showing how the concepts exist just through the mathematics alone. And the place that this is really going to become important will show a few lessons down the road, uh, probably one or two lessons from now, where we will dwell on the idea of when do you really need sign numbers in a way that you don't usually visualize in terms of a physical example. 
And my claim is going to be, it only happens when you get to algebra. Up until you get to algebra, almost everything that we do with sign numbers, you can do, for example, in terms of profit and loss. And I'll indicate that as we go along. At any rate, I think that's about enough to cover for today. So what we'll do is, is we'll now conclude with our usual practice problem. And to make sure that you understand what we mean by opposites and the like, the question for today is, what sign number is named by what looks like negative negative 4, or some people say minus minus 4? I want you to read this as what number is named by the opposite of negative 4. This to me is, is a very, very important concept. These two, they both look like a, like a minus sign. What's interesting is neither one of them is used as a minus sign. This one here is used to denote the opposite. And this one over here is used to denote the sign. We'll talk about that more as we go along. The real danger is, is that the minus sign means three completely different things, and it's very easy to get confused if you don't distinguish between them. At any rate, pause the video, work on this problem. As soon as you have the answer, or whatever you want to do, resume watching the video where I'll go through my solution and the commentary on it, okay? We're going to read this as the opposite of negative 4. See, it means the opposite of negative 4. However, we know that 4 is the opposite of negative 4. In other words, we already know that 4 plus negative 4 equals 0. Okay? By the way, notice from this that 1 is the opposite of the other. See, what do you have to add to 4 to get 0? Negative 4. What do you have to add to negative 4 to get 0? Positive 4. See, so the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. And I hope you can begin to see why I don't like to write these this way. In other words, it sounds funny to say minus, minus 4. And people have said to me, oh, this is simple. You have a double negative here. Yeah, maybe we do have a double negative, but if something is going to be positive just because there's two negatives, be careful. Here we're adding two negative numbers. What does this say? You have a $4 loss followed by a $1 loss. That's a $5 loss. The only way this could possibly be positive 5 is if I have no intention of paying back the, uh, the losses. In other words, uh, I borrowed $4, I'm going to keep it. I borrowed $1, I'm going to keep it, I'm not going to pay it back. You get in trouble that way. Making up a rule like that is counterproductive to what happens in the real world. So be careful when you say the rule of double negation, because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Same thing happened when we discussed fractions. When you multiply fractions, it's very easy to say to a student, look, it's simple, just multiply the two tops, the two numerators, multiply the two bottoms, the denominators. Yeah, but then when you're adding two fractions, why is it wrong to add the two numerators and add the two denominators? So I think that's enough for today. I'm going to look forward to continuing this discussion next time. But until next time, be well, study hard, have fun.